find his way up that ladder. Obviously, they don't want to stop him, so you can get to uh, number, number one, the top game this weekend. Yeah, 100%. We've come, come this far now. It'd, um, yeah, it'd be really nice to, to go all the way. Um, obviously, looking back a couple of weeks ago, it's probably um, a bit of a far cry, I reckon, to, to see us in this position now. And um, yeah, it's just really, really proud, I reckon, of the, of the team that, um, that we've been able to get here from, from that position. And um, we've got some nice momentum now. So it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling amongst the group. And, um, yeah, it's something, something we really want to work hard to achieve over these next two games. What changed? Like, what was the moment where things kind of Oh, hard to pinpoint, really. Um, BBL's a tournament where um, it might just take a couple of things to click one game and um, you just sort of pick up that momentum and, and feed off uh, wins as you go along. And that's something we've done over the last um, three or four games is just feed off those those wins we've been able to get, um, those close games we've been able to close out, um, I think that's that's one thing that we've probably improved um, from the start of the year and, and in previous seasons, um, those tight run chases that we haven't quite been able to grasp, um, that's something we're sort of being able to do now, so that's that's probably the, the main one, I'd say. Is there an advantage for you guys Uh, I'll, I'm not going to lie, it's nice. It's nice not having to do the, the long flight there um, and potentially back if we were to win over there as well. So um, I think the boys are a little bit happy about that. Um, obviously, uh, I'm, I'm sure the Perth Scorchers are a little bit down about that, um, not being able to play in front of a home crowd. But um, yeah, for us, the, the less travel, probably the better. Um, but in saying that, they're, um, they're not going to, you know, they're going to come ready to win and, and wanting to play no matter where they're playing. So. Um, yeah, we can't, we can't sort of um, expect them to not show up because of that. Personally, Mitch, how desperate were you to just get a game of cricket um, a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, yeah very desperate. <laughs> it was, um, yeah, it was a long couple of months, I guess, um, in, the, in the test hub, but I'm definitely glad I was a part of it. Um, it was a great experience for me. And um, yeah, as much as it can be tough sometimes bowling um, a lot of overs in the nets and not getting sort of a feel for where your game's at by not playing out the middle. It was still a great experience for me and um, definitely glad I'm back playing now. It's, it's um, awesome to pull on the, the teal for the heat and get out there and um, just have some fun while I'm out there. It's been great. What were your biggest takeouts of just bowling to some of these guys day in, day out? Yeah, I, I think when you're part of that setup, um, just the professionalism of, of those guys at that level, um, you sort of feed off that and pick up little things that, um, yeah, I guess, spending so much time with those guys you, you have cricket conversations and you, you just pick up lots of little things I guess along the way it's probably probably hard to pinpoint one specific thing that I picked up but um, the longer you're there around a, a professional outfit like that um, it just does a world of good for your cricket and I've, I found um, yeah I just picked up a few little things along the way. And, and now back with the heat as Marnus told you you're the, you're the second leg spinner now. <laughs> no he hasn't he hasn't told me that but I reckon in his mind he'd definitely think that. Um, no, it's been great to see Marnie bowl um, get some good overs. Uh, I think he, in the past he's probably been a little bit frustrated that he hasn't got that opportunity to bowl um, in this format of the game. And you're seeing what he can do um, now when he's given that opportunity. So um, it's, gr it's great to see him, him doing well. And um, I was copping it on the boundary the other night um, saying that I I'm definitely the second spinner in the team. So um, the, the Canberra crowd are probably uh, leaning more towards Marnie being the number one spinner. So, um, look, that's fine. It takes a little bit of the pressure off me. So, <laughs> so that's all good. But, yeah, it's great to see Marnie doing well. You two did really well against the Scorchers in that, that last game you played in. I think Colin said he, they might need to take their egos out of a little bit and play you a bit differently. How, did, how does that kind of sit with you? Yeah, well, look, it, it's always nice when you come up in opposition where you've had success um, in the past. It, it sort of gives you a little bit of confidence, I guess, going into the game. But um, we know that their batting lineup is there's five firepower all, all over it. So um, it, we can't just rock up and expect that they, we're going to be able to do the exact same thing we did three games ago. Um, they're obviously going to come better prepared. And um, that was the first time that this season that they were um, playing against both me and Marnie, so they'll, they'll be better prepared for us this time. So we're going to have to adapt as well to that and, and make sure that we're on top of um, whatever they throw at us. Yeah, the wicket play at Marnica the other night. Yeah, it was a beautiful wicket, I thought. Um, I, yeah, I don't really have much much for you on the wicket. Um, it was it was pretty much what we expected. Um, we, we knew it was going to be um, yeah nice and well paced and. Um, 
didn't didn't really play too many tricks. I think the ball swung a little bit for us, um, which we noticed for the for the power play, the first power play, which was nice to see the ball swinging around. I think our quicks enjoyed that. Xavier Bartlett obviously swings the ball nicely, and and Steckers was getting some nice swing there as well. So that that was one thing um, that was really positive for our bowlers. Um, and then I think the batters sort of spoke about the wicket getting a little bit quicker with the dew at night and um, sliding on a bit. So um, there was a, maybe a couple of things that we'll you know have to adapt to, and, and hopefully um, we get a nice nice wicket again for um, t- uh, Thursday night. Xavier Bartlett seems to have um, taken that, that really weird role, like an unprecedented role. Yeah. Like, what, how's he kind of handling handling all that? Yeah, well, he's just. He's a great young fella, X. Um, he's taken it in his stride really well. I think everyone in the team um, is quite frustrated for him because we know how good he is and we know um, how skillful he is as a bowler and really probably deserves to be bowling four overs every game. Um, but unfortunately, it's just the way that um, our lineup has, has worked out and it, he stuck his hand up and, and said he's happy to do that role. Um, I'm sure he'd love to be bowling four overs and playing playing the full, full game. Um, but, you know, he hasn't... He hasn't looked down and, and out about it. He's he's always taken a positive step about it and just wants to do whatever the role he can do for the team. So um, full credit to Exy for doing that. And to the six balls that he bowls, he's showing his skill uh, really well. So to be able to, to do that um, and show show how skillful he is with six balls to do it with um, has been really impressive from him. And, and tactically, do you think it gives you a bit of an advantage? I mean, it doesn't seem like any other team's really using that rule in the same way. Yeah, look, well, I think... Teams have taken it different ways, and and I don't think anyone's sort of nailed the X factor rule yet. I don't think it's. Uh, I think, like you said, it obviously depends on your lineup, depends on how you want to use it, depends on the situation of the game as well. So, um, while you can have things pre-planned, um, T20 cricket's so unpredictable that you know you might have to switch things on the go. So, while while that X factor of of Bartlett's been working for us um, over the over the past few games, uh, we might. You know, we might have to use him for four overs the next game, or um, yeah, we we might have to do something different if the if the game dictates it. So um, yeah, it's yeah, like I said, while it's been working, it's been great. Looking a bit further forward for you, obviously that, that South African tour coming up. Are you kind of planning or, or hoping to have that, that Shield game uh, before you leave? Yeah, I think. Well, I think that's the plan. Um, obviously, some some Shield cricket leading into that tour um, would be great to obviously as a leg spinner get some overs out in the middle. Um, it's been great playing here in the Big Bash, um, but I dare say four overs in the middle is uh, probably probably a bit underdone for if I was to prepare for a test match. So um, I think that'll be the plan is some shield cricket. I'm not sure where or when it is at the moment, but um, yeah, looking forward to, to getting back there. And, and any hesitation over going to South Africa? Like, are you still super keen or are you a bit worn down by all the bubbles and stuff? Oh, look, no, always, always keen to be a part of that Australian team. That's... Um, that's I think any cricketer um, to get into that setup is, is such a great achievement and, and, and so tough to crack into that um, you'd be a little bit silly to, to knock it back. So um, as, as much as it's been a hard strain on personal life and um, being away from home and things like that, these, these bubbles and um, all these hubs has, has been quite tough. But it's something that um, as part of a professional sport, it's just something you've got to deal with. And um, especially in the current times, it's, it's um, just something we've got to get on with. When was the last time you saw your family? <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It was, it, it was really tough being back in Brisbane and not being able to go home. That was quite um, tough uh, a few few days ago. But um, yeah, probably since November um, is yeah when I went in there for the White Bull squad um, back in November. So it's been it's been a while, and I'm definitely looking forward to a few days back at home um, after this is all done.